well, kind of. I, uh, I'm I'm here because uh, my cousin is getting married, but that's not the reason why I came. I just came to uh, just like see like my grandparents and uh, see like my sister's in-laws and whatnot. So uh, I've been here for two and a half weeks, and I love it. Uh, yeah, I uh, the last time I came here was about seven years ago. Okay. So I was like 14, I think. Maybe I I don't know something like that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, at first, when I told them I wasn't going to college, uh, they were they were quite shocked, and uh, they weren't they weren't too happy. But they learned to be supportive once the band started to uh, take off, and they started to see some magazines on TV, things of that nature. And uh, but yeah, at first they were they, it was it was kind of shocking too, especially in like the Indian community back home, because they're like, "What? He's not going to go to school right now to be a doctor or an engineer? One of the two, because that's the way it works out." But uh, yeah, it's. Uh, it was it was tough for them at first, but it, it it worked out, so it's all good. How did I get into metal? Well, uh, growing up, I've always wanted to play the guitar, and then uh, I, I I got into Metallica through like a few friends back home, and the singer of the band, uh, Jopper Cowboy, Johnny Davy, uh, was a really good friend of mine, still is a close friend of mine, and. Uh, we would just like pick up on new bands like together and just learn about new bands, and then eventually, as each year went by, we started to uh, progress into like more extreme, harder music, and uh, that's that's like the project that came out with Joplin Cowboy turned into be a little bit of a more extreme band than we we thought it would become. So uh, just over the years, I've just gotten into more faster, upbeat, extreme music, and that's that's just the way I think it'll keep going. Probably say Metallica or Megadeth. Those were like where it started. That's that's where it started. Well, uh, well, yeah. Genesis uh, was uh, was was yeah was like the reason why like it started to take off. But uh, most people know Job for Cowboy because of the old old EP called Doom and like SpongeBob videos and all that old crap together. But uh, I I really think Genesis put uh, like the band on a different page because the style is so. Ex- Extremely different, and that's what set it apart. And uh, people at first, of course, we lost fans, we gained new fans. It was just like the big progression of the way the band should be. But I think by the time I left the band, it was it was at like a pedestal to where where like the band will continue to like either maintain the same stature or they can rise. So at that point, we we've accomplished so much that uh, I I think that it was. It was just uh, Genesis put us on that level, and uh, I'm I'm still surprised because uh, getting the first week sales back and seeing that we made like the Billboard Top 200 was like a dream of mine. When we first made like, the Billboard charts, I could not believe that because I thought no one would buy the album. I was like, who is buy this album? And like I was just shocked that we actually made the Billboard charts. I'm thankful for that too. Uh, I left the band because I think I got to the point to where I was just uh, tired of touring. I was just uh, my, I was beat up. I was, I, I think I, I I think I was drinking a little bit too much too. I think the whole band was drinking a little bit too much. But uh, I was gone for like maybe like ten months out of the year. I was always traveling. Like we'd we'd get home for, from a tour, then I'd get on a plane and go somewhere else too. It was just it was just quick upbeat. And uh, I think I just uh, I think I I just wanted to go back to school and pursue a uh, medical career in, in uh, cardiology. So I I just. Uh, I told the guys that one day, and they were shocked. They were kind of bummed out, and they tried to get me to come back, but I said no. And and then finally, they they, they now have a guy from this band called Despised Icon. His name's Al, and uh, he's he's like working out great. I mean, like I'm still good friends with the whole entire, entire band, and still really close. So I mean, uh, it all worked out for the best, I think. Uh, no regret. I I think one regret I might say is that I wish I would have done dumber stuff on tour. And and it made more big time stories that was, that would have like ruined my whole like reputation. But that's about it. Well, uh, well, like uh, my last uh, rig that I was using, I was using a PV6505 with a VHT going through one cabinet and like another cabinet. And the cabinets that we were using, I was going between like one Mesa Boogie and one Orange cabinet. So I, I had that on stage. I had a rack unit with a 12 space rack and. Uh, and I had a wireless system, and I had a bunch of effects like a Line 6 delay pedal. I had a Boss delay pedal, noise gate, tuner, just pretty much standard stuff. And uh, I also had like a backup amp too, just in case like my amp failed and, and my guitar tech like just wanted to like 
like that didn't go. And, and then like guitar wise, uh, Ibanez actually made me like a, a custom guitar. Uh, it's it's like a purplish maroonish lame top guitar. It's like a Les Paul body. It has like perloid uh, inlays with like the ohm symbol on the 12th fret. And and it's it was it was a great guitar. But I I think like. Uh, one of my favorite guitars that I have by them was this Flying V that that I still have. That's like the guitar that I will never ever give up, and that's been like my favorite guitar for ever since they've given me that guitar. So I mean, but yeah, we were um, fully endorsed by Ibanez, and uh, they would treat us well, and it was it was a great experience with them. Well, uh, I think uh, one of the most memorable moments was uh, doing uh, the uh, last year Gigant tour with uh, Megadeth back home in the States, it was uh, Megadeth, Inflamed, Children of Bodom, Us, and High on Fire, and uh, that was that was an unbelievable tour, it was it was amazing, and like the most memorable part was uh, when I got to meet Dave Mustaine and go on his bus, and uh, he actually knew my name, which was the craziest thing in the world, because I was just like, how's this guy, the guy that I've looked up to for so long, knows my name, and uh, that, I think that tour like really matured me personally, just because of seeing like, that was like one of our first arena tours where like we were playing in front of like 18,000 people a night, 20,000 people a night. So it was just, uh, it was, and it was just like, it was just like going on summer camp because like all the bands were close together and it was amazing. I mean, like doing those summer festival tours are probably like the best experience because uh, in 07 we did Sounds the Underground and there's like, I think like 15 bands on there and we were like number 10. And it's just like playing summer camp because uh, the, every band hangs out together and it's just like a good experience. You're out in the sun the whole day. It's just, uh, it was a great growing experience too. Oh, Gigantor, those shows were ridiculous, man. It was, uh, it was, it was, it gave me chills like some nights too. I mean, uh, one night uh, we were in Toronto, Canada, and uh, they, uh, they sang happy birthday to our singer Johnny. It was his 21st birthday and the whole entire crowd sang him birthday. And that was a big memorable moment. And, and uh, Willie G, uh, Dave Mustaine's guitar tech brought out a, a, a cake for uh, for uh, Johnny too, and it was it was just amazing. And uh, but you know what's actually funny is like like uh, I think like a month before that, Negative came here I think, and we were doing like this uh, UK tour with them, the uh, UK Gigant tour, and those shows were rough because uh, we usually have a pretty big following in the UK and. Uh, for some reason, fans hated us when we went with like Megadeth. We got cell phones thrown at me, uh, just keys, and people would chuck beer at us. It was, it was rough, man. But uh, that was definitely what we thought was going to happen back home in the States, too. But it, it turned out to be an amazing experience. Uh, uh, not, not yet, man, but uh, if you uh, tell me something, I can probably go and check them out, maybe help them out to the best of my abilities. You know what? I I actually download myself, so I mean I I'm I'm fully with it too. So I mean uh, I I don't care at all. I mean like if if they could go buy a CD, but I I don't really care at all. I'm I'm actually for piracy because it's because that's because like CDs right now are like too expensive. It's a waste of money to go buy a CD when you just download for free. So I'm I'm all all about piracy. I know people in my band we're all the same way. We we all would download CDs and, and we had no problem with people buying our CD or downloading it as long as like, the music got out and I think with the help of the internet I think the band got become bigger so that whole downloader factor played out for the band so that's why I think we're all like initially for the whole idea of piracy. Next couple of months well I'm, I'm actually recording like my own stuff right now back home with a few musicians back home and it's uh, I still gotta go home and like finish up some uh, tracks too because I just started to uh, record bands too and stuff like that so I have like my own little practice space with like a studio and stuff like that so I've just been uh, working on like some new material with a few, few guys back home and then uh, I got to I gotta start back school in uh, in a few months too pursuing that pre-med career like every other Indian out there so I mean uh, we'll see but yeah I definitely want to get my new music out there soon so I mean yeah, like a, a new band that I'm working on. Uh, there's no big details yet, but I mean, there might be like some big names playing on it too, but both of <laughs> I don't know. State Metal Bangalore. <laughs>